I'd like to thank you guys for attending today's webcast. I hope it's a great, beautiful morning wherever you are. Um, the sun is shining here. The birds are chirping. And I think we had some summer temperatures yesterday here in Michigan, so I'm pretty excited about that. My name is Jonathan Jesse. We're going to be talking about um, DLP on the endpoint today. Uh, the webcast is entitled, You Left Your Laptop in the Airport. Did You Just Lose Your Company Secrets? I was doing some digging and prep for this webcast, and unfortunately the um, most recent notes I found were from 2010. But it was pretty scary to find out how many people lose their laptops each day at LAX, so Los Angeles Airport. Um, the notes that I found was that about a thousand a day leave their laptops in line at TSA each day just in LAX Airport with over 10,000 a week being left in TSA security. So <coughs> if you have people that travel a lot, are they leaving their laptop someplace in a cab and security, um, in a hotel, or maybe they're leaving it around at home? Is your company secret on that device? And how do you know if it's not? So. We're going to talk about that. We're also going to um, talk about the integration between the DLP and the semantic management platform, Altiris. We're going to show the Altiris management platform and the DLP integrated component. And if everything works correctly on my demo environment, we'll actually start taking a look at notifying and blocking some end users as well. A little bit of introduction. My name is Jonathan Jesse. I am the DLP team lead here at ITS Partners. I've been working with the Semantic DLP product for about three years um, and been working, focusing on all areas of DLP. So we've, done, we've worked with DLP on the endpoint, DLP at the network level, and DLP at storage. Uh, ITS Partners is a partner of Semantics. We were the partner of the year in 2011, and we've been doing semantic consulting for a little bit over 10 years. So I got a couple of slides today. We're going to talk about DLP. Uh, I hope they show up pretty good through this uh, black template that I have, um, and I try not to bore you with them. So <clears throat> number one is we're going to talk about how DLP and what DLP is, right? Data loss prevention is imperative. Most of the problems that we have are with people just doing things, right? Normal insiders, normal employees, normal customers doing things and not realizing, oh my gosh, I've just left, a, uh, just sent out the company's secrets or I've just sent out confidential information. It's not really the malicious person trying to do something bad, uh, whether it's corporate espionage or, or malicious targeting attack. It's most of the time people doing things and not knowing that what they're doing is causing a data leakage. 80% uh, of companies breached were not PCI compliant, so if PCI is a big thing, uh, how are you handling PCI compliancy? The uh, scary thing down here at the bottom, uh, this comes from some studies that Symantec has done in the past, $6.7 million is the average cost of a data breach, from reputation loss to cleanup to regulatory fees, etc. When we start talking about what DLP is, and I see that some of the things didn't come uh, across uh, very well on my uh, PowerPoint, so I apologize for that. We want to focus on the three areas of uh, of DLP. The storage, so that's things that are on my network, right? Data at rest, data at storage, whether that's on my endpoint or either my corporate drive. Uh, how do we go about finding that information? So discover, monitor how we're using that both on the network and on the endpoint, and then finally, uh, protect that by preventing that data from leaving. So if you are investigating a DLP product, make sure it handles these three questions, discover, monitor, and protect. How can I find out what data I have? How can I monitor the data that I have? And then finally, how can I protect it? And more importantly, we want it to cover all three areas, storage, endpoint, and network, and Semantic DLP does. And then we manage that through one platform and one common platform. One of the benefits and one of the things that I feel very strongly about with the Semantic DLP product is when I start working on policies and managing uh, data, I do that at a 
one-stop location. I don't have to write those policies in one area uh, for network, in one, a second area for storage, and a third area for the endpoint. My one single policy applies across all of the layers. And I do that through a management platform that's web-based, means that anywhere I can access that web page, I can, I can take care of uh, setting up things, changing policies, and also managing some of my endpoint related information. It's a slide that uh, we talk about when we start talking about DLP. The first big issue that we come across is that this is a continuous uh, reduction, right? It's a continuous cycle. And the first step is always visibility, gaining, gaining entrance and knowledge into what I have. And on to the endpoint, it's the ability to run a discover target and uh, discover against my endpoint and say, these laptops truly have confidential data on them. Then I need to start dealing with that from a, a further level of security, right? Do I encrypt the drives? Um, do I remove that confidential data? Um, do I limit what type of media, et cetera? So gaining that visibility into what is on my endpoints so I know that when people travel, they have, if they lose that device, we know exactly what's on that. And then remediation. Are we protecting it? We're using something like PGP's whole disk encryption to encrypt the drive and to make sure that the information that is on that laptop will not leave. That third step down is notification. We're starting notifying end users that what they have on their laptop or their desktop and what they're dealing with could possibly contain confidential information. If everything works correctly in my demo, so we'll pray quickly to the demo gods that uh, we'll actually get that notification and that pop-up reminding the end user that what they're doing could potentially violate one of the security policies that I have in place at my company. And then that final step is prevention. Actually doing something with the data and removing it, blocking it from being copied, blocking it from being printed, etc. The number of incidences in this visibility portion is high. The number of incidences in the prevention portion hopefully will be low. And it is a continuous process, right? Always tweaking my policies, always going back, moving closer to that point where I have very little actual violations. Why semantic? Um, the product works. Uh, it's the best, it's the industry's strongest product. Uh, comprehensive coverage, proven deployment methodology, uh, over 600 plus customers and a record of innovation. Remember, success in a DLP engagement, especially dealing with the endpoint, is verifying that we have the right automation to the right person in the right order, that we're giving this five second test, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, and then the ability to uh, provide that action through a one-click response. So we'll talk this way through of doing a successful workflow as it talks about or as we demonstrate getting incidences on the endpoint. All right, so this is the uh, one of the dashboards that can be set up within the Semantic Data Loss Prevention Management Council. Uh, we refer to it as Enforce. Uh, it's the name of the platform. So if you hear me talk about Enforce or the Enforce Management Platform, uh, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, I tend to name my demo boxes in force as well. So um, what we're looking at is a dashboard that talks about the incidences from an endpoint point of view. And you can see that I got a couple of things happening. Um, I have some uh, highest defenders, the policy summaries, um, and we can start taking a look at what's going on. But first of all, this is really focused first on discovering our data on the endpoint. So how do we go about doing that? On my endpoints, I have the DLP endpoint agent set up. And we'll talk about managing that both through the DLP console and also through the semantic management platform in just a minute. But once we set that up, I am going to set up a discover target. So go to manage and then discover targets. And you can see that I have an endpoint devices here. So let's just go ahead and I'll uh, start a new one so we can walk through the whole process, right? 
So I'm going to do a new discover target against the file system here. Give it a name. And then I'm going to take a look at the content that I want to look at. So we have the ability within the DLP system to um, limit what we're seeing, both from include and exclude folders. And we can also ignore files either smaller or larger or file scanned or modified between at, after excuse me, these dates. So what I want to do when I set this up, because I'm going to schedule this, I'm going to only scan files added or modified since the last file scan and also make the next full scan, the, the next scan, a full scan. So this is the scan we're going to do. Uh, this allows me to get, set these up as a schedule, um, kind of like an antivirus run. Now, the next thing you're saying is, oh my gosh, Jonathan, I, A, I'm going to have another agent, and B, I'm going to be hammering my, my endpoints just like I, I hammered them already with AV. Well, the good news is we can actually control A, the schedule, of when this uh, scan runs, B, the long-term CPU usage of this, and we can also can control what happens when this device is on battery. So we'll work on those uh, other settings um, when we talk about configuration of the DLP and agent. Really pretty simple. I'm going to go ahead and save. And here is my DLP demo, and I'm going to start this. And what's going to happen is all of my DLP endpoint agents are going to kick off. And you can see here that as I click on the refresh button, that I am going to start scanning. And I only have two agents complete, uh, talking right now. Uh, and this process will run as we cover the demo. Start to, I want to take a look at um, some of the incidences from an earlier scan that I run against my endpoints. And you can see that I have 56 violations of my policies. So I can now start tracking exactly what's happening within the system. So, here are all of my scans, and you can see exactly what I have going on. I have, oh, some financial information. I have some social security information, et cetera. But what if I want to see a specific computer? So let's go ahead and take a look at, um, I'm just going to drill into this Windows 7 computer here for a second. And then as you can see, I can click on my Windows 7 box and see all of the incidences that have happened for this particular device. So now, I'm going to pick on Chad. Chad's uh, out traveling. Um, he loses our laptop. I can take a look and find Chad's specific uh, computer name, run a report, and that report can tell me if there were any policy violations against his particular laptop. If there are, there, it's great. If there are, then I need to start triaging and moving through my next steps of saying, who do I have to notify, do I have to contact people, etc., about this policy violation. So this is my Windows 7 uh, laptop. I'm going to go ahead and um, open up an incident. Remember when I was talking about um, the five-second rule? I want to be able to look at this incident and say, within five seconds, yes, this is a violation, and I need to react to it. All right, so this is um, this is a spreadsheet that has some credit card information in it. A couple of things that I can see is when it was first discovered, if it was seen before, and I can start tracking and correlate things, right? So I've got some correlations here. I can actually see the whole file um, and who is the file owner from this. Now, built-in slash administrators might not be the best way of working on that, but I can change that data owner name and that data owner information. So I need to have this escalated and needs to be reviewed. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Needs Review Smart Response button. And what it's going to do is it's going to send an email notification to uh, the members of my DLP admin group, and it is also going to set the status to needs review. Now, if I'm a first level triager, uh, I'm going to come in, take a look at some of my incidences, and then from there, start changing the status 
uh, notifying the people that need to notify, etc. Remember, five second test, quick buttons to help me move on to my next issue. So let's go ahead and check into the status of our network discover. I'm sorry, our endpoint discover. You can see that it's running. Uh, I've processed a little over 1,200 items, and it is running in the background. In fact, it should be running on this guy right here. Um, I don't even notice it while I'm working in my demo that I'm running the scan because I throttle things. So let's talk about a couple of things. The first thing is, is yes, I do have a DLP agent on this device. Well, Jonathan, is it available or visible? No. There's nothing that I can see that shows up in my taskbar, um, in control panel, at remove programs that shows that I have an agent running. The next thing is, is I can provide a password file and password protect this from being uninstalled. So if I have users that like to poke around into their system and say, oh, I'd like to remove this, well, you have to have the password to take care of that. The other thing is there are two services that run for the DLP endpoint agent. The first one is the actual worker agent, the uh, worker processor service that does all of the work. And then the second one is a watchdog service. And that watchdog service is the only, its only job is to verify that the DLP agent service is running and if it's not to restart that guy. So I've got this up and running. It's discovering information. So now I can figure out if indeed I have confidential data on my endpoints, if they get lost, which I pray they don't. Uh, I can also start dealing with the fact that maybe you know, Joe or Susie, are, is, they're copying data from the network to their laptop and maybe taking it home or, or something like that. So let's go ahead and start talking about how I can set this configuration up. So here in the DLP Council, as an administrator, I have the ability to uh, deal with the agent configuration. Let's go ahead and click on Overview. Overview is going to go ahead and show me uh, what's happening with my DLP agents when the last time that they communicated with their IP address and also the version. You can see right now that I've done an upgrade recently of my system to DLP 11.5 and not all of my agents are upgraded yet. But don't worry, we'll work on taking care of that within the, the DLP integrated component into the management platform. There's a couple of very basic actions that I can do. I can select the drop down and I can restart this or I can shut this down. I can pull the logs from here. I can even change the endpoint server that, I, that I'm talking to. So there's, there's, there's ways to manage the endpoint agent through the uh, Enforce Management Platform. The Semantic Management Platform gives me additional uh, functions to deal with and manage with the agent. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So one of the questions that I usually get is, how do I set up a configuration? What do I track? And then more importantly, how do I apply these configurations to different groups? So let's hit the, the configuration here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, add a configuration. Let's give it a name, ELP Endpoint Webinar. Always use a description. Uh, I get a little cranky about that. Use a description. It's there for a reason. The person after you or you six months later um, will like you if you put description. So uh, profile. So let's start talking about some of the really awesome things that the DLP for endpoint agent can do. Uh, the first thing is it can handle removable storage. So whether that's an SHDC card, whether that's my USB drive, whether that's my Android phone that I plug into my um, USB core and try to copy data off to, uh, we can monitor that for removable storage. So you're thinking, but Jonathan, I have, a, I have my endpoint protection product, whether that's SAP or McAfee, we hope it's SAP, and I can control what removable storage through a uh, device profile. Yes, you can. That's great. But that application, or sorry, that device control portion of your endpoint protection product 
doesn't care about the content that's being copied to <coughs> the removable media. So I have set up my iron key USB drives to be the only allowable um, USB device in my network. That's great. However, no product outside of a DLP on the endpoint product really cares about the content of what's happening to that file. So I can plug in my removable media that's approved and take data off of the system all day long. If I have a DLP at the endpoint product, we can block, monitor, and alert even if it's the approved device. Uh, print facts uh, buffer, we can monitor it. So instead of trying to copy that confidential data off of it, let me just file print it. Well, we can monitor and block that as well. Uh, clipboard, um, we'll actually, if the, the, the demo deities are great, we can uh, we'll actually see a monitoring of the clipboard where I will try to copy some confidential data and be alerted to the fact that what I'm doing contains confidential data. Uh, if you're using Internet Explorer and Firefox, we can monitor HTTPS traffic. Um, most of our mail, uh, personal mail clients, Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo Mail, are all HTTPS by default. So now we can monitor HTTPS by default at the browser level instead of waiting and trying to get it at the network level. There's some filtering that we can add in as well. Um, so let's go ahead and monitor instant messaging, MSN. I want to also monitor copy to the local drive from a network share or copy from the uh, local drive to the share. So let's go ahead and, and we're going to monitor things like that. This is where I started talking about uh, my resource consumption on the endpoint. We're going to throttle this down to say that um, we're going to store less than 5%. Our agent store size will be less than 5% of available total space. We're going to consume during a discover scan uh, less than 20% average over a long-term CPU usage. And if I see less than 30% battery, pause that scan. So let's go ahead and save this guy. There's some advanced agent settings that we can talk about. Um, and you can read the help, click on help here. It talks about what exactly all of these settings are. So now I want to apply that configuration. You can apply a configuration to a particular server. So I only have one point endpoint server in place, so I want to apply that to that. And I want to apply an update. And my DLP endpoint servers are now updated to use this new configuration. If you want to have multiple configurations, you need to have multiple endpoint servers. The DLP product is limited to one endpoint configuration per endpoint server. So let's go ahead and take a look back at my incidences here on the endpoint. I want to show you a couple of things real quick. At a glance, I have, let's take a look at all of my incidences over time. You can see here that I'm getting a couple of, of other items here. Um, first, I got this little uh, bubble here. That means that the end user was notified and they responded. So let's go ahead and take a look at, at what we are doing here. All right, so you can see that I was doing some copying and pasting. Uh, the endpoint device, the user did respond and was notified. And you can see that I selected, I did not know transferring the data was, was restricted. We can run reports off of this user justification. So you can say that, that this is exactly how much that, that we need or what our end users are seeing. You can also see the machine name as well. So let's go ahead, and I have this uh, Excel spreadsheet here. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to grab some account IDs, some first names. <clears throat> this was the copy and paste with an end user notification. Um, it's saying that the clipboard content that I was trying to copy violates a policy, it violates the policy listed below, and then I am going to have to select this. So my manager approved the transfer of this. So you can customize these buttons, you can customize the text within here, or you don't even have to show this text when it comes down to it. Go ahead and click OK. 
and then that gets sent back to the uh, Mpore server as a new agent or a new incident. We will go ahead and see that response. Let's go ahead and start talking about the integrated component to uh, the semantic management platform. If you are an Altiris customer or a semantic customer, uh, you are licensed and a DLP customer, you are licensed for the DLP integrated component. When you select and install this portion of thing of the uh, this component into the management platform, a new menu comes up. So home. Semantic Data Loss Prevention Management provides this portal page, provides me a couple of items here. The first thing that I have to do is actually configure where my uh, server is set up, authentication to that DLP server, and uh, w how I talk with the DLP Infor server. You can see I have some system settings set up in here, and um, we can change that information within the system. The next thing that this portal provides us is some reporting. So you can see here that I have some of my agents that are legacy based and some that have upgraded. So two of my systems are current with the DLP agent. Uh, three of those are actually legacy computers. And I can click on this report and pull up the information to actually see which computers have what version of the DLP system in there. I can then start running tasks to target those systems to upgrade them. And we'll show you how that works. The other thing that I set up within the, the integrated component is I can configure my DLP agent package. Now, the DLP product, um, when you download it from uh, licensing.semantic.com or fileconnect.semantic.com, there's a zip file, and that zip file for the endpoint agent contains a batch file that you can edit and deploy the MSI, or you can just pass the command lines with. So what we're doing is we're actually passing the command lines to that MSI. And when you set this up, there's a couple of things that you need to set up. The first of all, you need to figure out where your endpoint server is and the name of it. Uh, a key if you're using a key, and then finally the uninstall password. Once you have everything set up, this will be able to be deployed from the management platform into the Altier or into the endpoints through the Altiris agent. And then I can set up my different tasks, whether that's an upgrade task uh, or an install task, and get those pushed out and manage the upgrade automatically. One of the current struggles for some DLP customers is what happens when I upgrade my DLP agent, or sorry, my DLP software from 11.1 to 11.5, how do I go about upgrading all of my agents? So I have mostly x64 agents. If I remember correctly, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. So this is a policy that the Altiris management agent controls. And when my computers check in, they're going to get a new policy. And that new policy is install the agent, or sorry, with the upgrade command switches in place instead of the install command switches. Allows me when I move from 11.1 to 11.5 to easily update and upgrade all of my endpoint agents. Right now, within the DLP management platform within Enforce, there's no way to do that. Uh, you have to either uh, to use another product, whether that's SCCM or Group Policy, to push out that software upgrade. Um, or if you're an Altiers customer, leverage Altiers. A couple other tasks that I get that I don't have within the, the um, DLP Enforce platform. Um, I do have the ability to change the endpoint server or get the configuration. Um, I can change the log level. I can start and stop agents. The other thing that I can do is toggle print screen. So that would block print screen from happening, and I can set that for a specific moment. So here's my toggle print screen command. I'm going to deactivate print screen, select quick run, type in my Windows 7 box, and the Altiris agent is going to get this task and it is going to then run the job to disable the print screen. 
also run some reporting within the system to start getting information out, such as status, um, some detailed information on the deployment. All right, so here's this report again. Once again, deployment status um, and also the uh, version here on the information. The integrated component for Alteris allows me to manage and get information about my endpoints. Um, it allows me to deploy and upgrade to run some tasks around the Alteris agent, around the uh, DLP agent through the Alteris agent, and to get uh, better management, upgradability, installation, et cetera, of the DLP endpoint agent to get further coverage. So let's go back to a minute to my DLP console. Remember the question that we had at the beginning through the title was, I just lost my laptop in the airport. Did I lose any confidential data there? So let's go ahead and talk about my discover target. Remember discover target from the endpoint allows me to grab incidences, allows me to filter that incident by the computer and to see exactly what's happening uh, on my systems to know if I'm losing confidential data. The DLP endpoint agent also allows me to monitor and block areas such as remove the media, file print, copy paste, etc. Thanks again for attending.